Hey, 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 I'm back. In case you missed it, I released an extra scene of The Taste of a Smile in the past week. Find out more about it after the show. Or the episode. Whatever. Let's get started. Welcome to the Lesbian Romantic Podcast. This is Worth the Risk. Part 16. Painkillers. Natalie reached for her neck. What the fuck? She thought and frowned. Probing the sore muscles, she wondered what she had done to cause this pain. Oh, shit. She mouthed and opened her eyes. She was lying in her living room. At the other end of the couch, Raven sat with her head propped up against a pillow at an angle that looked downright painful. Her slow breathing indicated that she was still asleep. Raven's left hand was resting on her knee, the right on her foot. They were both still in the shorts and shirt they had put on after their shower last night. Natalie tried not to move. When did I fall asleep? She wondered. She searched her mind for memories of last night. The movie had been mediocre at best, but she had enjoyed watching it anyway. But this was of no importance, of course. Raven touching her was... When Raven's fingertips had stroked the sensitive skin of her foot, Natalie's body had instantly been ablaze. Everything inside her had pulsed with desire. Her breathing had become ragged, and she had hidden it from Raven as best as she could. This all could have been a friendly gesture, could it not? Kim massaged her feet at times, and it's not like Raven had escalated things and moved higher up Natalie's leg. So... After a while, Natalie had forced herself to calm down and just enjoy it. It seemed she had been a little too successful at it. She had no idea how she had managed to fall asleep. Maybe the wine had something to do with it? She'd also been tired from the restless night the day before. Now, daylight was already streaming through the window. Natalie wasn't wearing a watch, but thought it was about 5.30 in the morning. The storm had passed and the first rays of sunlight brightened her front garden. The elastic band that kept Raven's hair pulled back had slipped down, allowing most of the braids to escape. Natalie kept staring, now admiring Raven's cheekbones, nose, and lips. You are so beautiful, Natalie thought as if talking to Raven. She wished she could lean over and stroke Raven's cheek, maybe place a soft kiss on her temple. Or wrap her arm around Raven and pull her into a more comfortable position, then fall back asleep. This is the worst crush ever, Natalie thought, closing her eyes and letting her head fall back. She instantly regretted it, grabbing her neck and wincing. Her head felt heavy and foggy. She would have to take a painkiller. Glancing back at Raven, she decided she probably wouldn't be the only person in need of one. Maybe I should wake her up, Natalie wondered. Prevent further injury? She grinned. She could already picture them walking the street together like two old ladies with stiff necks and shoulders. A muscle in her leg twitched and pulled her out of her thoughts. She wanted to stretch her leg but couldn't without waking up Raven, she feared. The muscle twitched again and it was starting to feel like a cramp now. She slowly moved her leg, but couldn't stop Raven's hand from slipping off rather unceremoniously. <clears throat> My neck hurts, Raven croaked, opening her eyes. Sorry, I woke you up, Natalie winced. Raven frowned, reaching for her neck. Natalie chuckled. Yeah, mine hurts too. Oh, my head too, Raven groaned. Natalie nodded. We need coffee and some painkillers. Raven blew out air as she straightened her back. <sighs> yeah, that sounds about right. Natalie swung her legs off the couch. Her bladder was killing her. She didn't understand how she hadn't noticed before. Let me go to the bathroom first. <sighs> yes, Raven said. I need to go too. Natalie rolled her shoulders, hearing several pops in her ears. 
You go first. I'll get the coffee started. Thanks. Raven sighed as she got up and put her hands on her lower back. Damn. This is how I know I'm not in my twenties anymore. Some stretching might help, Natalie said, reaching for the tips of her toes in an attempt to show off, but only hurting herself more. She bit back a moan. I'm not stretching anything. Raven chuckled and headed for the stairs. Natalie grimaced as she straightened. Yeah, maybe that's best. She could hear Raven laugh while ascending the stairs. Natalie grinned, tucked some hair behind her ear, and walked into her kitchen. There, she made quick work of getting the coffee brewing before taking out two mugs and glasses. She placed her hands on the counter while waiting for the coffee. She knew her fridge was mostly empty. It was too early to have breakfast delivered. She pursed her lips and looked around the kitchen. Where did I put my phone? Natalie wondered. Upstairs, the toilet flushed. Natalie found her phone under a paper bag. She saw that she had one missed call and several messages. She quickly shot off a text to Kim, feeling a little guilty. The missed call, she saw, was from Bart. The timestamp of the missed call was 9.30 p.m., she noticed, instantly feeling annoyed. Why did he always have to contact her so late? She was glad she hadn't heard her phone vibrate. It would have ruined her evening with Raven. But Raven would have finally been able to talk to him. Natalie then realized, chewing on her lower lip. She opened her email to check if Bart had perhaps emailed her. At the top of the list, she spotted an unread email from the travel agency instead. The topic was Robinson Ticket. Natalie frowned. She tapped the message and quickly scanned its content. The travel agent apologized for being so late to respond, but that Raven should have contacted him directly from the start. Wait, what? Natalie mumbled to herself. That smells so good, Raven said, her voice still sounding raw. Hey, I got an email from the travel agency about you, Natalie said, focusing on the rest of the message. Her chest tightened when she reached the last paragraph. Really? Raven asked. What is it about? Your new ticket? Natalie said questioningly, trying to stay calm. New ticket? Raven replied, peering at the screen over her shoulder. Her breath tickled Natalie's ear. It says you requested to fly out tonight? Natalie said, pointing at the screen. She saw that her hand was shaking and quickly lowered it. Oh, shit. Raven whispered. Can I? She held out her hand for the phone. Natalie gave it to her. She watched Raven's eyes flick left and right. Her mind raced as she waited. Was Raven really leaving tonight? Why hadn't she told her before? Was something wrong back home? Would she ever see her again? Raven sighed. <sighs> okay, I need to call someone and see if I can fix this. She handed Natalie her phone back. What is going on? Natalie asked quietly. I'll explain later, Raven replied. I need to contact the airline first. But it says that you asked for this, Natalie insisted. I did. Raven nodded, but I changed my mind. Natalie shook her head in confusion. You wanted to leave today? Why? Is something wrong? Raven's shoulders dropped. Look, let me try to reverse this first. I don't want to leave anymore. But the travel agency doesn't open until nine, Natalie squeaked. It's only... She glanced down at the screen. Six. Raven frowned. Okay, that means it's eleven in the evening in the States. I don't think I can reach anyone right now. She blew out a long breath. Natalie stared down at her feet. The dull ache at the back of her head was turning into a fierce throb. She grimaced, turning to go to fetch the painkillers. But Raven grabbed her hand and stopped her. Hey, she said, I'm not leaving. Her fingers closed around Natalie's. Natalie slowly raised her eyes to meet Raven's. Okay, good. The corners of Raven's lips curved up. Yes, this is good. Natalie's heart rate picked up more. She stroked Raven's fingers with her thumb. They stood staring at each other for a long moment. 
Natalie swallowed as she considered leaning over to kiss Raven, but Raven beat her to it. She briefly pressed her lips against Natalie's, letting out a soft sigh. Natalie gasped in surprise. The butterflies in her stomach spread throughout her whole body, making every inch of her skin tingle. Raven wrapped her arms around Natalie and kissed her again. Her lips were so soft. Natalie marveled at the sensation, thinking she wouldn't have lived without experiencing this. Their fingers entwined, but Natalie nor Raven deepened the kiss. Forehead resting against forehead, they looked at each other. Then, Natalie grinned, and Raven grinned right back at her. I've wanted to do that from the first day I met you, Natalie whispered. You mean the day before yesterday? Raven said, amused. Natalie squeezed her hand and laughed. Yes, <laughs> except that it seems long ago. I've wanted this forever too, Raven said, placing another soft kiss on Natalie's lips. Natalie put her hands on Raven's hips, instantly mesmerized by the feel of her curves. She parted her lips. It was an invitation Raven eagerly accepted. The kiss made Natalie cling to Raven, desperate for more. <sighs> Whoa, Raven gasped, her chest moving up and down rapidly. Natalie smiled as she pressed her cheek against Raven's. She felt a little lightheaded and tightened her hold. That sounds about right. Raven groaned and straightened. Oh, shit, my neck though. Natalie took a step back. Oh, sorry. Did I hurt you? No, Raven said, reaching for her shoulder. Your couch did. Let me get those painkillers, Natalie giggled. I need one too. Thanks, Raven smiled shyly. Natalie bent on her lower lip as she walked to the closet with the painkillers. She turned to face Raven before opening it. So, you're not leaving tonight? No, I'm not leaving. But I think we need to talk before we take this, Raven said and pointed at Natalie and back at herself. Any further? This was part 16 of War Theresque. About that extra scene, the recurring supporters have spoken and have chosen to revisit Lex and Mary for this extra scene. I try to write five extra scenes every year, and recurring supporters get to vote who I revisit, and this time it was Lex and Mary. I'll post the poll for the next scene soon on Patreon and the website, so if you are a recurring supporter, keep an eye on that and let me know who you would like to see again next. If I make it to my next Patreon goal, by the way, I will start producing the extra scenes in audio again, at least two of them. So take a look at that as well on Patreon if you are interested in supporting the podcast. Oh, almost forgot. The extra scene is available on the website. Uh, just go to lesbianromantic.com and click, I think, extra scenes in the navigation. That's, <laughs> it's that easy. Um, it's available for everyone to read, but I was able to create it thanks to the, the recurring support of fellow romantics around the world. Thank you so much. I look forward to writing the next one. I think I'm going to do it pretty soon. I'm not going to wait until Halloween, <laughs> for sure. All right, that was all for this episode. Thank you so much for spending this time with me, and I will see you on the website, the Keybase Community Chat, or Patreon. Have a good week. See you soon. Bye. Bonk. Natalie kept staring, now admiring Raven's cheekbones. Noke. Noke? What's a noke? <laughs> she slowly moved her leg, but couldn't stop Raven's hand from slicking off. Slicking? Wow.